Hi everyone, um, thank you for having me today and talk about a construction material that I really like um, to work with. And before I start talking about um, the potential and the possibilities that a rammed earth uh, construction has, um, I would like to introduce um, the office Knippers Helbig. We are in, located in Stuttgart and Berlin in Germany and in New York. Um, right now we are about 90 employees. We have uh, um, yeah, a big range of different project types, like for example, um, offices, school or residential buildings, um, grid shells made out of steel and glass, um, long span structures, uh, pedestrian bridges, or um, we work with uh, new materials um, like textile reinforced concrete and of course, um, rammed earth. Um, I experience a lot of different uh, materials in my um, seven years at Knippers Helbig, but in the last couple of years I focus on sustain sustainable structures, that means timber and rammed earth. I also want to do a s small introduction into um, clay um, and focus, focus on the material properties that are important for um, a structural engineer to know if uh, we want to design with that material. Um, yeah, clay has a really old history, you already heard that uh, today. Um, there are uh, one third of the African UNESCO World Heritage Sites are um, hundreds of years old um, clay architecture. As you can see here, uh, two examples, one in Mali and one in, in Niger from um, the 14th century. Um, and another nice um, example that I want to show because that was an here on the left side, an old um, mosque that um, were discussed to demolish, but they keep it and renovate it and um, converted it into a um, uh, cultural and um, educational center. Um, yeah, we already saw that. I wanted to point out um, clay or earth um, architecture is not only located in, in Africa, you can find it um, all over the world. Um, it's it's still um, about 40% of the world's population um, lives in buildings made out of clay. Um, the numbers are a bit um, yeah f going down because it's um, considered the material is considered as an yeah an old-fashioned material, um, which is of course not. That um, are two examples of the modern um, clay architecture. Um, on the left side you see the residential house of Martin Rauch. Martin Rauch is um, the founder of Lehmton Erde, a very uh, known um, company that is speci specialized in rammed earth constructions. Um, they also take part or play, play a role um, for the project on the right side. That's maybe you know it. It's, it's um, a warehouse from uh, Ricola, a herb uh, candy uh, producer. Um, both um, examples are from the left one in 2008, the other one from 2012. Um, we already heard about what is clay exactly. So it's the clay minerals um, and some silty, sandy, stony um, components. Um, these clay minerals, um, they define the color or end, um, the, the co cohesion, and the co cohesion, um, which in turn, um, defines the material properties. So for example, what I need to know then as an engineer, the compressive strength, for example, and the water, um, water capability. And so there's one thing really important, the more humidity in the clay mixture, the less compressive strength the material has. So during um, production, um, working with it, the material is more, um, has more humidity and then there, there's this uh, drying process where the, the water uh, in the mixture evaporates and during that process the material um, develops his comp compressive strength. Um, I want to talk about, uh, just give, give a quick overview of uh, the different uh, yeah, um, methods of building we have with that material. There's on the right side, there's uh, 12 different kind of uh, methods 
there are. Um, here on the left, you see three examples that are, let's say, the most interesting ones for um, load-bearing walls or, um, or also um, non-bearing walls and fill-ins for frame structures, like we also already heard, clay bricks, um, but not fired, air-dried, um, a straw clay um, mixture, and of course the rammed earth. That's where I will focus on today. Just some uh, examples um, for the interior design. Um, and as I already said, I need to know um, how this material um, behaves. So what is very in, uh, important, as I said, the properties can vary because of the, um, the type and amount of the clay minerals inside it. Um, that means it's not um, a standard material where there's one recipe and then I build with this one recipe. There are different kind of ones. Um, that means also different um, comp compressive strength, for example. Then there's um, this shrinkage behavior that we know from concrete as well. So during this process of uh, this drying process, when the water um, evaporates, um, the product or the mixture dries out and it, there can be some cracking. So just have to know that. Um, I want to say some words about this um, non-standardized material. Um, we don't have any euro code in Germany, but um, luckily we have some rules. They are called very simple limbo uh, rules since a couple of years now. And these ones we can use um, for um, designing with worth. Um, we also have a really strict um, code regulations in Germany, so we're, yeah, we're really happy that we at least have these. Um, but these rules are limited um, to the following requirements I listed here. For example, um, the, the building height, it's maximum seven meter. It has to be a uh, residential construction, for example, maximum two full floors and um, a maximum floor height. Um, if we don't fulfill these requirements, then we have to go through um, a process. It's a case-by-case -case study, or uh, we call it um, one-time approval. Um, that means that we are not only a team of the structural engineer and uh, um, engineer of record, there's also a third part, uh, like a survey or an expert that writes a, a report um, for the building authorities so that they are sure, okay, we can build that. Um, and the other thing I, I wanted to point out, because I have to, that's also really important to know, of course, the, the walls, that the earth walls can be um, weathered directly. Um, but of course, what happens, I brought here some, some examples. That's, um, they are from, from a book that Martin Rauch, um, you already um, know that name, um, showed, um, like constructive, constructive rules. If you have a w an outside wall, um, that will be uh, will get touch in in, in rain, uh, with rain. So on the left side for A, B, and C, you see uh, the the wall right after the construction, and then on the right side um, you see what happened after a couple of years. So um, the rain washes out um, the the clay mixture a bit, and what um, but what stays is of course the the um, components like the gravel we have, or either we could um, include. Why is this not working? Okay. <laughs> or either we include some, you saw it here, like these strips. It g washed out a bit, little bit, and then it stucks out because that um, cannot uh, wash it be washed out by the rain, and it protects from washing more out, or um, it's like called controlled erosion. I think that's a word that is easily to understand without, without any further explanation. Then there's a lot of um, advantages. I just um, jump through because I also want to talk about some project that we worked on. Um, very important for us, it has um, very low um, embodied carbon. Um, as, you, as you already heard, um, we can use, it's everywhere in the soil, we can easily use excavated uh, material to build directly. So you dig it out because maybe you have a basement floor and use it later on for the walls. Same building, same project. And it's 100% um, recyclable, without any loss of quality. Um, I think that's like the only material, and it's yeah. 
Very nice. So I start now to talk a bit about a Natura campus that we worked on 2019. It's located in Germany. Um, the architects are Haskuk Zemrich, um, also located in Stuttgart. Um, and the construction company for the rammed earth wa was Lehmtun Erde. Um, right, um, it's an office building. It's a three-story one. It's the headquarter um, of the new headquarter for the Alnatura company. I'm not sure if Alnatura is known here in Norway. Sorry? Their products are also sold ah, in... Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. So like they also sell um, ecological... Um, products, yeah. <laughs> um, what's not so important right now is the, the, or what's not so important or interesting is the building structure itself, that's um, a skeleton concrete structure, but what's very interesting is the facade system. So we have an outside facade made out of rammed earth, as you can see already on the right picture. Um, these are prefabricated elements. Um, and they are uh, produced in a field factory directly on site, because we have the space. Uh, we had the space. Um, and they are multi-layered or several layered elements. I will show later on some pictures. And what's also very important um, for um, that location, we need to consider earthquake or seismic forces. We also, of course, you can see um, we're not fulfilled the requirements of these rules, so we had to go th through the process of uh, one-time um, approval. So here you can see a bit more in detail the structure. Um, on the right side you see this already mentioned um, several layer um, layering. So we have this big, bigger um, outer layer with uh, 38 centimeter. Then there's a thermal layer and the inside layer because um, obviously the client want to see the clay inside and outside. So we have uh, the the very positive uh, properties in the inside with the humidity, regulation, and so on, and have this nice um, optical, uh, this nice view, view from the outside. It, um, it stands in front of the building structure, um, all the vertical load from the, from the facade, so it's dead load, just goes vertically down to um, a concrete part at the bottom, and then we hang it back or um, yeah, support it only for um, horizontal forces because we have this um, seismic forces um, to, to, to handle. And um, in, in these vertical rammed earth structure, we needed to include um, a small concrete part to make it possible to transfer these loads from the earth wall into the um, building structure. Some values um, that we need to, to design or calculate the, the material and the walls. Um, there is a huge uh, safety factor uh, regarding um, calculating the, the strength um, of this material. It's about, um, at first, you have to reduce it by a factor of seven, of about seven. So that is that jump from 2.4 uh, to 0 0.34. And then, um, in addition, because you remember the compressive strength depends on the, the, the water that is in the mixture right now. And if it's um, direct um, or weathered, of course, there, there is rain on, on, on the clay. And we have to be sure that we use a compressive strength for our calculations that never gets lower as than we calculated. So there's another safety factor of um, a reduction of 20%. So later we have to we calculate or um, yeah we calculate with the, with a value of 0 point um, 27. Just just to show um, how many safety factors we have to consider. And in addition, <laughs> we because I've talked about this erosion that that happens for sure. Um, we not considered the whole wall thickness. We reduce it by uh, two centimeter. So this is how um, the prefect fabricated elements has been um, produced. There is this, um, oh, how is it called? Schalung, Kof coverage, no. Framework. A frame, yeah, like that. Um, on the outside, of course, because you, ha you have to put it somewhere inside to, and then you fill in the layers. Um, that's how that, that looks. Um, 
is done, the, the, that look is done from the, for the rammed earth walls, there's several layering. Um, you fill in, I don't know, maybe 10, 10 centimeter, then you um, compress it, compressed it, and then it's later on a layer of about six centimeter. You can see here again the different layering. And um, that's, in, that's directly on site um, in that it's a small temporary um, hall. Uh, there was a really huge um, element done, as you can see on the, on the uh, right side. And then later on is cut with a huge um, the saw. Um, then, of course, uh, these elements have to dry out to get this compressive strength they, that we need. Um, that, depending on the weather, that takes a couple of weeks. Um, but a good thing is with the, with the prefabrication, there's no shrinkage to consider later on um, when you have the, the whole uh, big structure. It already happens in these small elements and it's not, uh, not an issue at all. And then you start um, putting all these blocks together as you can see here on, on the other pictures. And yeah, you put them top on top of each other. And because it, they are single elements, you have to later on, oh, they are um, put together with a clay mortar, of course, as you do it for normal bricks. And later on, you can um, work on, on, on the optic. And like you see on the right side, it looks like one monolithic um, wall. I was um, so we finished uh, the project 2019 and we visited it uh, a couple of weeks ago and you see a bit of the change that happened as we told there is this corrosion when it's uh, when there's rain on a wall but doesn't matter as we've learned um, when the aggregate sticks out or stone sticks out it slow down the erosion so that is what we want a last picture for that um, of that project Then um, I only have renderings for that project because um, it's still in a planning process. It's with the same architects and the same um, construction company um, that we worked on already with um, for Al Natura. Um, it's in that time it's in a residential um, area and it's more story, so a big height for f um, of the the um, outer ramped earth facade. Um, but that means we had to. Um, we could not just uh, uh, put it in front of the building because that, uh, the height was too big for the compressive strength of the material. So we put it in on every floor. There, they sh the, the elements also um, should be prefabricated. We were already discussing if Lehmton Erde, because a couple of years ago they finished um, their um, own factory hall in, in Austria, uh, where they are able to produce in a, fa in a quick time or very quickly um, the prefabricated elements and then yeah, transport it to some sites. Just a quick picture, yeah, but only, as I said, renderings, because it's still a planning process. Um, what we're working on right now, that's um, a new logistic um, campus for the company Veleda. They are also, yeah, um, ecological um, orientated. They do a lot of nat um, cos natural cosmetic products. Um, and what I talk about is uh, that here on the right side at the bottom, it's um, a hay hay rack, um, like a warehouse, with the timber racks inside. And it has a rammed earth facade as well and a timber facade. Um, as you can see here, the uh, rammed earth um, facade is eight meter high. Um, and in that project, we, we didn't have the, the role as, as a structural engineer, but as the expert, it's a one-time approval process as well. Um, and we, um, we wrote for that um, project the, the, yeah, the expert report. And and um, and we we uh, we advise like the the construction process on site. It's a bit similar to Al Natura. There's this um, vertical wall in front of the building, and we um, support it horizontally back to the uh, structure that's inside. Um, we we could use the excavated material from the basement. 
Um, we just need to um, mix it a bit with, with uh, more aggregates to have this nice combination of this, this um, sandy components and the stones. And then it's filled in in this <laughs> huge framework. I mean, it's yeah, it's eight meter. They they did it in in two um, parts: first four meter, and then the other four. Um, and this is how it looks like. Um, it's a wall thickness of about sixty centimeters. <laughs> so it's it's possible to stand in and work with this hand um, vibration machine uh, to yeah to compress the material. Uh, of course, um, this wall has also um, this concrete um, beam inside to transfer the loads from the wall to the structure. And this is one of the latest pictures of it, um, the already eight meter high um, rammed earth facade. Um, another project, um, it's not sadly not yet built because of it was more um, of a feasibility study. Um, but so what is that? <laughs> That's a, a noise protection wall. Um, bec and because of his uh, huge um, density or the, the high dead load that this material has, it's similar compared to concrete, um, it has a really good sound insulation. Um, and that means it's, it can be really nicely used for these uh, noise, noise protection walls. And especially if you think of the noise protection wall made of, of clay is much more nicer than the usual standard ones that you may know. Um, yeah, we, we did some, some uh, research um, and study here and I hope that it will be um, built. It has, um, of course, the already mentioned um, positive ecologi ecological um, properties. Um, it's nice for the ins insects, for example, to, to live in that area. I really like that. Last one, also in planning, um, it's also in Germany. Um, it's for it's a building for for the for the university there, but uh, yeah, it's also outside rammed earth walls. But I sadly cannot talk uh, too much about that. Last um, slide. Um, what I want to say, yeah, it's it's good to hear that it takes. Uh, more part in the education and I hope that will happen in, in Germany as well um, so that it's not only an, a niche product and b but that we use it in, 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 in a wider range of projects and much more often um, it's such a nice sustainable um, construction material and I hope the interest is growing more and more and we build more and more with that project pro uh, with that product thanks Thank you, uh, Stephanie. Um, then uh, I invite you to, to sit here and, and um, maybe uh, answer some questions together with uh, Andrea. Uh, so, yes, very fascinating. Um, and uh, Stephanie, following up on, on um, what Andrea uh, mentioned, uh, that uh, that you have to do this testing on uh, on the materials. And, and as I see, you, you, you basically build the buildings from the ground you excavate on the yeah. building site, right? That's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which, which would otherwise be, be, be landfill. So, um, yeah, correct. But uh, how, how, how do you pr proceed with the testing? How is kind of the routine of the... Uh that, that's why we need um, a, a big range of these companies. Um, like here for Veleda, we work together with um, Conluto. They are super specialized in um, clay mixtures. They come on site. Of course, you know before um, uh, you you start the construction who you're going to work with, and and they are so experienced. They, they you also can do it with optical um, testing if that's um, um, a material that it's um, proper for proper use for that case. And then later on, you, you like you do it for concrete as well. You do these um, these cubes and just compress them until they they break, and then you get these values. Um, and 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 there and with that with these values you can calculate the compressive strength strength that we then use for the calculations, such as simple testing, yeah, compression compression testing. Fascinating. And then you, you use on site you use actually very like manual machinery basically from the concrete industry, right? For uh, like yeah, in yeah. Norwegian it's called the ho hopatusa. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. like uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
So yeah, it's a simple um, work. Of course, it's um, exhausting <laughs> for eight meter. Um, and it took for Veleda, for example, it took um, yeah a couple of months to f to finish it. Uh, but it's a huge um, warehouse. It's 80 meter by 40 meter, so a lot of clay. <laughs> nice. Do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, I actually <coughs> want to a um, little bit. Um, uh interest in architecture was that the, the use of um, uh, robots. You have all kinds of machineries, robots. And uh, when we look at the uh, building industry today, we see like... Uh, today we see that, uh, for example, the, uh, some wood companies like Erne Holzbau, they are using... Um, they're using their own like production robots from the wood uh, manufacturer to um, to do this tedious work. And I just want to hear you from your point of view, Andrea. Is uh, is Aho also like looking into it in the design work with the students to have this tedious work also done with the facilities that you have? Is th is that something that you're looking into? Uh, well, uh, no, <laughs> we are not looking into that at all. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. The first one is we actually don't have robots <laughs> in the school. We just have really, really nice workshops. But they, uh, so we have really good machinery and, and uh, tools to work with. But mm, uh, I think except for a couple of small CNC machines, we don't really have, uh, we don't have like a proper robot or anything like that. Uh, I have also taught, for example, at Hong Kong University in the university and also in Monash, they both had robot, robot arms and they were experimenting in there, some colleagues with um, clay casting and also um, uh, clay extrusions, mo most often for burning after, but it's a uh, very expensive equipment and, and it requires a lot of maintenance. And I don't think at this moment Aho is interested or prepared for that. Uh, however, uh, what also studying the the subject what has uh, become really important for us is to think about how we can scale it up and with clay I don't think it's necessary to go full on robotics but to find a middle ground uh, certainly we need to reduce the amount of labor and traditionally it's demanding it's a slow process of laying layers uh, at least with rammed earth there's other ways of working with it but also because of it's a um, less stable compressive strength and so on. We always overdimension all the elements. It's heavy, right? So anyway, if we're thinking about uh, mass producing or prefabricating, it's always a good idea to do it close to the site so that we reduce. I mean, if we have really long transportation um, lines, then we're going to kind of switch the balance between all the carbon and like you know the benefits of excavating uh, so i think that to find a way to work with automation is important but not necessarily like a robot because the elements would be very the, the limitations of the robot is that the elements are always a little bit smaller for distribution later um, one final question to stephanie before we go to have lunch you showed in your lecture a, a beautiful coexistence of concrete and uh, clay. If, um, <coughs> if you would get the question from Oslo, and it would be something like this, we are building an, a handful of, we are building a handful of towers near the central stations, about 60 to 120 meters high. We would like to use uh, concrete skeletons and apply some clay for inner firewalls and uh, shear capacity. Uh, would you say, yes, let's look at that? Mm. Or would you say, well? Mm, I mean, as I've mentioned, it has a high density. So if we put it on a really high scale, there's a lot of load we have to transfer from the top to the bottom. That means huge, maybe, um, slab thickness, huge walls to transfer that load. Because of course we cannot um, just uh, put it, um, the clay um, 
on top of it, um, because I th the maximum height just roundabout of uh, just simply um, rammed earth wall, I guess it's about 10 meter maybe, and then the compressive strength, just uh, due to the dead load of the material itself, it, we cannot reach that. So we have to put it every floor, but then the structure has to bear a really high dead load. I'm not sure if this is, yeah. I mean, that c that needs bigger um, elements then, more concrete maybe in the structure. I think that's not, not really the right way. It that has to be a bit more smaller. That was an honest <laughs> answer. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, we have uh, one qu um, question from behind. Uh, good. So, real fast with the uh, uh, El Natura, uh, Martin Haas was interviewed by the Norwegian, am I on? The Norwegian architect uh, if, uh, organization, that interview is online, um, as well as I did two, uh, two we webinars with Techna, where you can see both Martin Haas and Rauch explaining about that building, if you have more interest in it. Um, I wanted to add that uh, the city of Copenhagen is now working with uh, with rammed earth, testing that, also with robot um, compressing. And for to to get an idea of the strength uh, which you just mentioned, then uh, a 30 by 30 centimeter column, three meter tall, can take 10,000 kilos, not in an earthquake, but that's just straight pressure. The question, I'll get to it here. Um, in June, there was an architect student in Bergen who graduated. Uh, her, uh, her thesis were, were about a, a national clay center in, uh, in Norway. It should be by Aarhus. And uh, she has had workshops doing rammed earth in Bergen Architecture School. She had never heard about you, and I bet you have never heard about her. And why on earth in such a small architect-wise country as Norway, don't you communicate between the two biggest schools? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I it's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I have been myself very much trying to find out who are the actors and what is the, the network that we have uh, here in Norway. And it, it hasn't been particularly easy. There isn't a lot of information. Uh, I think it takes time, but it's, it's becoming a a more clear panorama. I think uh, there's, and it's not just about clay, it's, I think it's, it's hay and it's a lot of different other uh, actors because all of these materials often work together, right? And, uh, and, you know, it has been an intention to develop some form of center to do this, but it has also been a lot of challenges. So I think we just need to keep trying. And that's why also the exhibitions and finding ways to, to share and communicate, it's really important because a lot of this work happens uh, small scale, especially in Norway. And, uh, and you, you develop so much knowledge. You learn about the soil that you find, you come up with a new way of doing it, and then it stays there. So we really need to find ways to share it and, and not just amongst architects, but also to get the, the builders excited and developers, you know, uh, the industry. I think that's, that's our biggest challenge. If we start to have better uh, share of knowledge, then we will probably start building more with these materials. Um, we actually have one more question from our um, uh, digital uh, audience. So this is our way of uh, sharing. Um, uh, and uh, I, I guess it's for you, uh, Stephanie. Um, uh, do you have experience with responses from investors uh, as to their concerns with clay buildings? Sorry again. So, so the, uh, the the investors or, yeah. or the of the buildings are they? Uh, how are their um, response on this? Uh, do, are they concerned or or, or um, how is the market for for? Um, yeah. I guess it's not really a concern um, about the material properties, um, but the costs. Um, I hope that um, 
mm, because it's a regional material that the, the costs can get a bit lower, especially when there are more companies that are working with it, so bigger um, competition. Um, yeah, bec what I have experienced, it's more about the costs right now, not direct, maybe the uh, uh, wrong um, expectation regarding the material itself. Thank you.